So let's pray right now, God, in the name of Jesus. God, there's so many hyphens that have joined in all over North America, all over the world. Every, almost every continent, we see hyphens joining this live stream today. In the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, Heavenly Father, to move in their lives. God, release our hyphens on this world. Release them in this generation for a new thing that you're doing in this hour. Yes, God, we know the pandemic has taken the world by storm, but I believe, God, that it's put us in a cocoon, preparing us for the things that you have for us in this hour. The things that you want to be released on this earth will be done for this generation. And bless them in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. God bless you, Brother Wilson, as you finish. Oh, you are my champion. And giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who has conquered it. Oh, I've tried so hard to see it it took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn it you give what we don't deserve it you took the broken things and raise him to glory cause you are my champion and giants fall with you stand undefeated every battle you've won you crown me with confidence I'm you I am I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has covered it all oh now I can finally see it you're teaching me how to receive it so let all the striving cease Cause this is my victory Cause you are my champion Giants for with you stand undefeated Every battle you've won I am who you say I am Crown me with confidence, I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated, with the one who has conquered it all. You conquered it all. Jesus, you are greater than all. Yeah. Cause when I lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me And when I up my mouth, a miracle start breaking out. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. 
Jesus has given me. Oh, and when I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Hey, Jesus has given me. And when I open up my mouth, Miracles start breaking out. I have the authority. Cause Jesus has given me is sure breath in our lungs. So we pour out a praise. Pour out a praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out a praise to you only. It's your breath in our lives. So we pour out a praise. Pour out a praise. It's your breath in our lives. So we pour out a praise to you only. Hey. Come on, I wonder right now if you would just pour out your praise to God right where you are. Yeah. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these songs will sing. Great are you. Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Oh, lift it up and say it now. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Oh, pray, are you, Lord? And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Oh, pray, are you? So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you. Oh, come on, sing that one more time. Your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath. In our lungs. So we pour out a praise to you only. Hallelujah. Amen. Right now, can we just lift him up and tell him how great he is? He's given us another day to worship him, to love him. And on this wonderful day, hear from him. Amen. Lord, I pray that you would speak to the hearts of every high faith, everyone watching, everyone tuned in today, and those that will be watching maybe later, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Wilson, for leading us in worship last night and today, and a tremendous word from Brother Burns yesterday, and that was awesome. And uh, thank you to everyone who has made this possible and for all the hyphen that are logged on and joining us this morning. It's so good to have my beautiful wife, Amber, with me. And um, I, I'm grateful that she's here. And I know she's going to um, bless you with um, what God has put into her life. And so, Amber, you want to give us a welcome? It's an honor to be here with you, hyphens. Um, hyphens hold a very special place in my heart. 
I remember when we were evangelizing and we were coming back to our home church, the home church where we pastored, uh, oh my goodness, almost 12 years, I guess. And I was so moved in that service, especially during the worship time, because when I looked at the platform, with the exception of two people on the platform, they were all hyphens and they were all leading the service. And those hyphens were young people in our youth ministry. And I'm not saying that to take any type of credit, it's all glory to God, but every 12 year old turns into a hyphen. And when you're pouring into 12 year olds, you never know how God is gonna use them. And in our case, to see our young people being used by God so mightily was just, made my heart just burst with joy knowing that I had just a very small part to pour into hyphens. So we love hyphens and I believe in hyphens and you guys are amazing. And I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Wonderful. Awesome. I see my California people in the house. It's a little bit earlier than the rest, uh, uh, you know, but hopefully we had some coffee to get us going. We're going to jump right in, in in this culture conversation. And we have so many uh, uh, other speakers that are going to just add to what today holds and, uh, we've been praying, we've been fasting for today, and we're just going to hopefully share with you what God has put in our hearts to um, impact this generation and impact this body of hyphens. And so culture is defined in, in, uh, in several ways, but the verb uh, of culture, the, the way you would use it in a verb is uh, to maintain, to it maintains its condition for growth. And uh, that's what a, a culture is. So you can Maybe you've heard of a culture sample. Well, that kind of shows you, if you study it out, what, what it's all about and if it's growing, if it's sustainable and suitable. And in the noun form of the word culture, um, it's arts or other things or manifestations of uh, achievement uh, that are regarded collectively in a society um, and nations, people, um, cities, communities will all gather around this culture and, and live by it. And the word culture comes from a French word, which means to tend to or to grow. And so that's what culture uh, is defined as. And so I want to share with you some interesting uh, studies or facts, or I would say studies rather, um, that in recent years, in 2018, a, a church in Canada North America predicted that by 2040, it would have no members, it would have no attendees, and no givers. This is a a liberal, they pronounce themselves as a liberal denomination church. Um, They didn't give their name, but that's what they said. And that's a very scary stat. Whether Whatever denomination it is, it's a very scary stat that by that, in 2040, we're not too far from that, that there would be no members, no attendees, and no Givers, And so what has happened is that in this secular world, it has desensitized people, faithful people, even church people. And that's why we need to be careful that we are not numb or desensitized by society or culture. Because when we go into the presence of God, I can't just sit back and be so numb that he can't speak to me. But that I want to be sensitive to what he has to say. I want to hear uh, truth. I, I want to. I want to read truth. I want to live in that, so that I don't follow uh, different doctrines. And the Bible warns about that. You know, uh, going and, and believing different things. And sometimes, if you believe a delusion, it becomes your truth. And 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 so we we've got to be careful with that. And what happens is that, and and we've seen it. You know, is that when secularism begins to infiltrate our lives, it 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 marries our flesh. And we know that our flesh cannot be trusted. You can't trust your flesh uh, because when you put your emotions, which is your flesh, together with, with what your culture is, what you've been raised, what's ingrained in you, you contend if you are not uh, focused and you're not in the right place, that you will follow ways that are not biblical, ways that um, you know you never thought you would be going down that path. And you know now you look at things that now society accepts And we're like, how did we even get here? And so we've got to be careful that uh, we don't believe this myth that all roads lead to salvation or that all roads lead to what God wants in my life. There's only one way. There's only one road. And and the only way to be saved, and if you don't know this, if you're watching for the very first time, 
is we've got to be born again of water and of spirit. And we've got to uh, give him everything. So I can't let secularism infiltrate my flesh. My flesh cannot be trusted. It can never be trusted. If you think you can trust your flesh, uh, you're wrong. It, it will always uh, deceive you. And the Bible says that your heart will deceive you. So when people say, follow your heart, <laughs> it's like the worst thing you can say or do because your heart is so deceitful. And so we've got to realize that we need conviction and we need uh, to, to have a place of an altar so that our culture, the church culture can live in our lives no matter what's going on around us. It doesn't matter what city you live in. It doesn't matter what country you live in. It doesn't matter who your audience or your circle or your sphere is. We've got to have that altar. And while we think, you know, some people think, well, the church is going down. We got to be careful. I was so thankful yesterday. Sister uh, Dr. Keller was was sharing some stats about the United Pentecostal Church hyphen. And I'm so thrilled to hear those stats that that so much more, so many more hyphens are involved in that. They're just they're staying in the church. It's time to close that back door of the church, so to speak. Right. And, and so I'm, I'm thrilled by that. But oftentimes we can have doom and gloom and say, oh, no, the church is going down or. You know, right now we're in the middle of a, 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 a hearing. It's going to start on Monday for a new Supreme Court justice in the United States. And I'm not worried about what's going to happen. I have to trust God. God is in control. And so he even said that nothing external is going to attack his church. He said on this rock, what rock? In Matthew 16, he says on this rock, well, the rock of the revelation of who Jesus is. Do you know who Jesus is? If you know who Jesus is, that's your revelation. You need to have that revelation. And, and we'll get into that in, in, uh, in a moment. And Amber, I want you to share that, how that happened in your life, that rock. And so with this rock, the revelation of who Jesus is, he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. So you got to realize the church is not going to be in trouble. He is our chief cornerstone. He is our head, our high priest. He is the one who is in leading us. And so, you know, the church needs people to be faithful. And that's where we come in, in this culture conversation. And our faithfulness, Amber, is always at stake. It's always, we've got to keep faithful, especially in a secular age. And um, in, in this moment where everything is trying to pull us away, you know, and, and from being faithful, but we've got to be careful not to uh, walk away from that because we have been uh, marked by him and hopefully conviction you live with conviction conviction is what keeps me grounded you know um, wh why do you dress the way you dress amber is it because you're told to do that it's it's conviction it's it's conviction that does that because i i want to give my life to the lord and so i, I cannot be shaped by it. And so and if we're not careful, you know, churches will look less like churches and more like the world around them when it should be the opposite. We need to be the influence. We need to be the catalyst that that is influencing our city. You see, the Bible says we're a city on a hill, a light that cannot be hid. And, and, and we've got to stick true to some truths in our lives. You know, sadly, um, in the church world at large, uh, the message of heaven and hell is not being preached. You know, like, oh, there's no such thing as hell. There's no such thing as those things. And But we've got to be careful that we don't stray away from truth and that we don't walk away from those things because failure to, to do that will lead people to not know truth, you know. But it's not enough just to know truth. It's not enough just to be around truth. Just ask Judas. He was around Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's not enough. You got to love the truth. And so what do you love? And this year has been such a crazy year. I mean, we have been bombarded by so much that we were not prepared for. Um, thank God for all the multimedia ministries of every church. <laughs> all the sound people. Right. Give it up. For all the audiovisual people in the church, you have made church and Jesus famous. Mm -hmm. And um, the airwaves are filled with preaching, and that's awesome. But we've seen so much hatred, and we've seen so much things that want to redefine us. You know, 
I felt pressure, Amber, I felt pressure to, to even my, have my social media reflect what culture was wanting me to say. Why should I feel pressure to do that? And, and so we got to be careful not to chant with the mob of public opinion because the mob will turn on you. <laughs> the mob will eventually turn on you. Be careful when you start to chant with the mob. And, and while we clearly as a church, we denounce every wrongdoing that's going on or that has happened in, in our country um, or in our world even, uh, we denounce racism, social injustices. We denounce those things. We denounce uh, hate and we can't get distracted with the quarrels amongst each other. We can't be quarreling. We've got to realize that our greatest battle is against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so we need to hold on to the culture that the church provides. And we can't take our cues from celebrities. You know, there's a celebrity. I'm not even going to name the him uh, because I just don't want to. <laughs> there's no reason to. But he says this. He says uh, he, he, he got called out because he went to a church and then he tried to backwalk and backtrack that. He said, my faith is important to me, but no church redefines me or my life. I'm not a spokesman for any church or any group of people. He says, my values define who I am. We need less hate in this world, not more. I am a man who believes that everyone is entitled to love who they want, free from judgment of their fellow man. The, the topic at hand was, was homosexuality and same-sex marriage, and he was trying to walk back that thing. And he, what he was basically saying is that he doesn't need a church to define who he is. That's absolutely false. We need the church. We need the church. A, a, a recently, a church, a, 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 a pastor of a mega church had an opportunity in, in, in front of a live audience with a lot of viewers and viewership, viewership to talk about homosexuality and same-sex marriage. Again, we're talking about culture, the culture conversations, okay? And, and he, he gives this interview to CNN and he gives a non-answer saying it's not our place to tell anyone how they should live. That's their journey. I'm sorry. As a pastor, you're a shepherd. You're a watchman on the wall. And as a, a, a part of the flock, I want my shepherd. I want my pastor to tell me where I'm headed wrong or, or doing wrong. We need a pastor that has veto power in our life. I want to ask you that question. Does your pastor have veto power in your life? I mean it. If, if you bring things to, to your pastor and, and you say, pastor, I've, I've studied it out. I've prayed it out. But you have veto power. That's the true test of our, our faith in God and God's authority in our lives. And so I, I was saddened that this pastor that is well known, <laughs> you know, you, you may have read his books and you may have sung his songs. You may have, uh, you know, watched any of his uh, YouTubes or podcasts, listen to them. But I was just so sad how ambiguous this could be. We need to be clear that our beliefs don't undermine the culture of Christ and the culture that the church puts in us. That's why the church is important and we are summoned by God. It's not the great suggestion. It's the great commission. It's not like, oh, well, I suggest you do this. Well, suggestion is what pizza place to go to. I suggest you go there. What, where to go buy this or that. But this is the great commission to make disciples and establish a church of, of followers of Jesus, sons and daughters of God who devote themselves to Christ and to the kingdom. And so uh, I, I, I lay that out so that, Amber, I want, I'd like for you to share how you maintain your culture, where you got it from, how you maintained it, and in the seasons and steps where God led you, how did you have victory in that place in the middle of chaos and things around you? So, Amber, go ahead and, and share with us how that impacted you. Well, I was raised in church. Um, so growing up, uh, one of the priorities in our family was that our lifestyle was going to be centered around God and the house of God, the presence of God, the church. Um, but we all know, even being raised in church, or whether you're not raised in church, um, your values, your morals, 
your priorities when you become a hyphen will be tested. So it's not just going to be, oh, this was my parents' priority. This was my family's priority. When you're a hyphen, you have to define your own priorities. You have to define your own values and whatever those are will be tested at some point. God gives you opportunities to show him this is a true value in my life. And so one of those priorities and values that I put when I was a hyphen going to college was um, church is non-negotiable. Whenever the doors of the church are open, I'm committing. I'm committing. I know I have. I had a full schedule every time um, that I was enrolled in my semesters at college, full schedule. But I was committed to the house of God and I was committed to ministry. I didn't want to be disconnected from the church. Um, I didn't want to use my college years as an excuse. Oh, well, I don't have time, but in four years, I'll have time. Um, I saw right at the, I mean, I, we probably all know stories of that's where it starts. The disconnect in hyphens when they're in their career path, right. um, you know, which is a good thing. You're establishing your career and God's going to use you um, in every season. But one of the priorities was church and um a commitment to church and commitment to be involved in ministry was a non-negotiable. So um, I became aware of this amazing job that um, I was going to be interviewing for. What were you studying first off? Uh, my tell, main, tell the okay, So my major, uh, I was on the path. I've always been intrigued with and fascinated by law. So I wanted to be a lawyer. I had that. That was my path ever since I was little. I've always wanted to do that. So, um, my major was criminal justice and um, like i said i had a full schedule and i was involved in our youth ministry at the time so that was my ministry in the church well um this job opportunity came available and i um applied and i got an interview and it was at a courthouse and it was a night job uh, the shifts were like 5 to 10 p.m it was downtown in our uh, san diego downtown courthouse and it was just going to be amazing all the way around. So I just felt like, okay, this could really be a great door and a potential to open up doors in the future for my career. So I applied, I got the interview and I'm interviewing and the interview actually was going really good. So I felt good up until the person that was interviewing me said, okay, well, you know, it's Monday through Thursday, five to 10. And when he said that I, in my mind, I thought, okay, well, I thought this was my dream job at, for the moment, um, but it's not because my church time, we have Bible study on Wednesday. And for me, that was non-negotiable. So I let him finish what he was saying. And then I, I just chimed in and he goes, so what do you think? I mean, I think he told me you would be a perfect fit here. And, and I said, well, I feel like I, this would be a great opportunity for me as well. I appreciate your time, but unfortunately I have um, church on Wednesday nights. And for me, that's non-negotiable. Amber, can I ask you a question? How important was this job? Is this just like? Well, I, I feel, I mean, at that time, it was very important because it was not just a job, but it was a job that could possibly open up other doors and opportunities for my career path. And also would look amazing on my resume um, when I would apply to like law school and all that. So I thought, again, wow. this could be a, a great thing. But I always feel like God gives you those opportunities where it's like the dream of whatever career path you're in to test you and to test your morals and to test your values and to test your priorities. But for me, it was tempting. It, it would have been easy to say, well, you know, maybe I could talk to my pastor and say, you know, just for four years, I will be out of Wednesday Bible study mm -hmm. or whatever. But I was committed. And I, I just said, no, because this is I'm not it's not negotiable. So I told that to the inner, uh, to who was interviewing me, which was going to be my potential boss. And without hesitation, he said, wow, okay, all right, well, then you just don't work on Wednesdays. He goes, and I'll give you the opportunity to come up, to come during the day on Friday to make up those hours wow. so there will be no decrease in your pay. And I just couldn't believe it. I, I thought, wow, God you just open up a door that I really thought was going to be shut because of my priorities, right. but because I maintain my priorities and maintain my non-negotiables, God opened the door. Right. And I was at that job. It was amazing. And um, I did make up those hours on Fridays, but it's just, I just wanted my case in point is when you take a stand for God, 
right. and you don't go back on your priorities and right. what is your priorities at this time in your hyphen life, God will stand for you. And maybe that would have been a potential wrong door. So God was shutting it. But I felt like God was showing me, you know what? You keep me first. Right. I'm going to open up doors that you never thought could be open right. because of your priorities. Right. So hyphen, stay true to your priorities. Right. Stay true to your non-negotiables. And God, you will have favor and God will bless you. So right, right then and there, I established my testimony. Right. Without having a Bible study with my potential boss, I already showed him in my interview what my life was surrounded by, what my life was, priorities in my life. And that was church. And that conversation right there led to so many more conversations later on in that job. Um, another thing I wanted to point out when we're talking about culture is, um, of course, we're in a social media culture. And um, it's a huge platform that we um, have not had really at our disposal. Now it's, of course, we've been in it for several years, right. but this whole social media and, and the, this um, influencers on social media. And that is a huge platform to be an influencer and to have a huge following. And I commend so many of our apostolic hyphens right. for being an apostolic influencer on social media. God is using you. Continue to let him use you on that platform. That is a type of platform. Uh, when I was a hyphen, I never had. Uh, the social media. So it can be used for greatness. And I feel like God is using so many of our apostolics, whether you're like a modesty influencer, whether you're just sharing God and letting your light shine and you're impacting and your reach is amazing. Right. So continue to do that. But I also want to point out, maybe you don't have the biggest following on social media. And so many times we can think so many hyphens possibly can think because I don't have that huge following on social media, right. then I'm not an influencer. In scripture, God shows us the value of both. Right. God shows us that God, Jesus Christ, was an influencer of the masses. He did miracles in the masses. So he had the huge social media following, if you will. He did the miracles mm -hmm. in the masses, but he also, he also ministered to the one, to the individual, right. to the one-on-one. -on -one. He ministered in places where he frequent a lot, right. where he went to a lot. And wherever he went, he ministered to the masses, yet he also ministered to the one. So I want to encourage the hyphens. You might not be an influencer of the masses on social media, but you can be an influencer of the one, and you're still an influencer. So I want you to think about the places that you frequent, right. the coffee shops, um, the, sh the shopping areas. Um, your college campus, right. your, your, who you sit by right. in class, right. you can influence them. And, and, and a lot of times when we think influence, we think, okay, we know we have to bring a Bible study chart and flip the page before that can even happen. Right. Show kindness. And nowadays, I mean, I know we're masked up, but show that smile. When you show kindness, you are showing the love of God. You right. are influencing. And you know what? They're going to know who to go to. Right. You know what? That job that I put God as a priority at, when they knew that my life revolved around church and they would ask me questions, you don't know how many times my coworkers would come to me when they needed prayer. Can you pray? I know you pray. I know you go to church. And they right. didn't even go to church. Right. God is intentional where he places his people. Right. Hyphen, God is intentional of where he placed you. He might have placed you to influence the masses and he might have placed you at that coffee shop right. because he knew someone hurting was going to cross your path. So in our culture, we're used to being, there's causes that we're used to being made aware of, raising the awareness. Right. Breast cancer is one of them. We're used to that in our culture. But I don't want an event like this hyphen release online to be the only time that our awareness is as raised I mean, yeah. or heightened yeah. for the things of God, the culture, the kingdom right. culture. This has to be a lifestyle. Right. This can't just be a one month out of the year and we're like, oh God, I want to win souls. But God, help me to have an awareness every day. That's right. why it's so important, hyphens, to be in the presence of God every day right. because that's where he will heighten his awareness. Right. That's where it's like, God, wherever I'm at, that's my mission field. That's where you called me. Right. 
When I step on my campus, that's my mission field. When I go to the Amen. places that I frequent, I can reach the one. And that one might be reaching a nation, who knows? Right. But don't, ne don't neglect reaching the one. Right. Because that is what kingdom culture is all about. Right. And Jesus, you know, you mentioned he fed and reached the masses on the hillside, what, 15,000 people? Right. And I'm sure on that hillside, not everyone maybe followed him for the rest of the way. They just were hungry, right? But then he met those ones. And, and we see that the, the leper who we met in Mark, who um, got healed, and he went and told everyone about Jesus. Right. You know, he started publishing what Jesus did because that one interaction, uh, the, the woman at the well, he, Jesus finds her at this well, and she has had a crazy lifestyle, um, probably, you know, <clears throat> just a lot of baggage, whatever, going on in her life. And Jesus ministers to her, and she drops her water pot. She drops what she was doing and goes and tells people about Jesus. It's right. that impact. And it's interesting you say um, how we have an impact, and you can do this. You don't need to be preaching to people right. necessarily. Now, I'm not saying preaching is important, but what I'm saying is that just show the love of God. We Last year, our church, and me personally, and you were involved in this too, Amber, we took a stand in our city um, with, with uh, against something that was just gonna be passed by our city council. It was unrighteous, mm -hmm. um, it was counter culture really to yeah. even our city. I'm like, our city doesn't reflect that, but outsiders came in to infiltrate our culture and they wanted to change it. So we stood up and and it was not popular. We, we got interviewed in the news and and so we were, I was getting hate mail. We, we had to install security cameras and you know, it was, it was crazy. And um, I frequent a Starbucks. I go to the same coffee shop, same Starbucks, uh, and you can you can love me or hate me for that. But I just go to the same place all the time. And um, uh, and so I went to that Starbucks, and I had my head down. I didn't want to put a mobile order because I didn't want them to spit in my drink. I was really worried about that. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I go there and I, I put my head down, and, and the barista goes, "Hey, what's going on, Amado?" I said, "Hey, man." He said, "I just want to tell you, bro." He said. People came in here, they try to hate on you. And and, and uh, I told them, you're wrong. This guy is so kind. This guy shows love. And, and you could be furthest from the truth. And, and I stood up for you. I stood up for you, he said. I said, really? I said, well, thank you. He said, I got your back. And and and, and he, we still talk even to this day. He's, he's still, I see him often. And what's crazy is this guy, his lifestyle is counterculture to my lifestyle. But we had the opportunity to interact and share the love of God. Right. And now we see him. And this, check this out. This is so amazing. We just had a prayer service, an outdoor prayer service at a random spot in San Diego. And guess who walks by? That very same barista. And he says, what's going on, Amato? He said, you're always doing something. He said, you're always involved. He said, I love it. And I'm just saying, you hit it right on the head. We can have an impact. Right. I thought I was just ordering a, ordering a venti iced Americano. And that's it. No, no, you've got impact. Right. And so I'm just thankful for that. And so thank you for sharing that, that we can be an influencer to the masses and, and we can reach the ones. That's yes. awesome. And, and I'll, I'd like for you to, to, to speak on this point. And I think it's very important for um, Hyphen and also the ones who are watching us. Hyphen, you need to realize that young people, the youth group is watching you. Mm -hmm. They're watching your steps. They're taking cues from you. And so what we do is important. Right. And, and you said it, it's so awesome. And like, uh, it seems like the college years, we take a break from everything. We walk away from ministry, we walk away from, from a lot. And so we, I know we just got a few uh, minutes left, but I'd like for us to, this is important in what we were gonna talk about in this culture conversation, how we keep culture, God's culture in our lives. How do we maintain the culture, the kingdom culture in our life while still being active and busy and what kept you through through that season? And uh, I just want to give her a shout out. She is a certified paralegal. She got her certification at UCSD, University of California, San Diego. So um, if I'm ever in trouble, I've got someone to bail me out and uh, defend me in court. Uh, and so that's that's awesome. But uh, I'll, can you share? You know that I think it's that what kept you in the kingdom culture. Well, first and foremost. Um, we can't get away from our personal disciplines, which really is going to be the foundation 
of who we are individually in God. Um, your prayer life is going to keep you. Right. That connection to God every day. There's no way that we can be who God wants us to be in this season of our life if we're not connected to God every day, especially in the world that we live in. You're going to college or you're in an intense program or you're already on your career path. So you're immersed in the world's culture every single day. Let me ask you what you're doing to combat the world's culture that you're immersed in every day. Our knowledge of the word of God is great, but that alone is not gonna keep you. We have to have a love for truth. I can know the scriptures. I was a Bible quizzer and I'm, I'm so thankful for the years of Bible quizzing. Bible quizzing is one of my favorite programs and now my kids are in Bible quizzing. But knowing the scriptures alone, I have to love it. I have to love it. I have to obey it. I have to love it. So personal disciplines is what's gonna keep you. Your prayer life, right. your fasting, um, I did some of the most extensive fasting when I was a hyphen because I personally just felt led to allow God to lead you deeper. You're not just going to have, it's not just about good intentions. Well, I want a deeper walk with God. Well, we have to put action behind that. And so keeping those personal disciplines, good. engaging in the word of God every day is what's going to keep you. And also connecting. Right connecting to your local church and ministry. Make sure you're connected because I can tell you the hyphens that I have seen that have left truth. I feel like it all started when they started disconnecting themselves from the church. That in and of itself wasn't like necessarily sin and all the lights didn't go off or yeah. alarms go off, but that's, I feel like where it started is, oh, I don't have time for that anymore. So I'm gonna back away from ministry. Well, then you're disconnected. Right. And that's really where the enemy wants you. He wants right. you to be vulnerable. And the way that we're vulnerable is when we disconnect from the kingdom culture. Right. From service. From service. Yeah. It's all about service. Right. How that, are you serving? That keeps us hooked. The service it, keeps us hooked. It keeps us hooked. And oftentimes when you're not even feeling, uh, look, we've had many years of service. And not every day, even this past week, I could say, oh, this is all great. There's days you... You're discouraged. There's things right. happen, but because you're serving, it keeps you in the kingdom of God. Right. We always saw it's just always it's storybook, it's textbook rather. Um, that whenever someone leaves, they don't backslide or leave or walk away overnight. And I'm believing this. And I, I I prayed this, and the Lord gave this to me for this year. And I'm I'm going to say it everywhere I go is that this is the year where prodigals are coming back to right. our churches. Right. We're going to see the greatest revival of prodigals. Yeah. You may have lost a friend. You may have worshiped with someone that's no longer worshiping right. with you, but I believe it in the name of Jesus. We're going to have the greatest revival of prodigals, yeah. but they didn't walk away overnight. Amber, they, they walked away when they left ministry yes. and, and don't leave your ministry. Right. You think you're just an usher. You think you're just a praise singer or a worship leader. You think you're just doing something that's so uh, mi minuscule or minute. No, it's keeping you in the kingdom and in the presence right. of God. <laughs> I didn't I didn't start preaching automatically. I just started serving. I said, Pastor, where do you want me to serve? And I was I was the best gopher <laughs> that our church had. And, and, and I didn't care where I was or where I where I stood in the flow chart, but right. stay in ministry. It will right. ground you. And that's what kept the apostle Peter. He's the one who declared. Uh, who Jesus was. He, he said, you are, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He was in ministry. Yeah. You know, he denied Jesus, walked away. The Bible says he cursed his language, but his, his voice and language, uh, uh, it, it, it went against him. It denied him. It right. betrayed him. But but so they could tell something was different. You see, and that's why, you know, people that leave the church, they make horrible sinners. They're not, they're miserable right. because they they know who they are in Christ. That's why, the culture is important because it really never leaves you. Right. It never leaves you. It never does. And so he, he, he this is Peter. He begins to uh, speak the truth. He stays in ministry, but he realizes that he's not going to leave the Lord. And so we realize that he is God. His lordship is great. And we are called to live and obey uh, and follow his commands. And so 
the moral authority of the church has been seriously diluted, uh, watered down by the, the scandal of sexual immorality by that's tolerated in, in society, by the scandal of, of abuse that is uh, hasn't been denied or spoken against. We've got to stand against those things. Right. Sexual immorality and immorality in general is at an all time high. And, and, and you read it that by 20, we are in 2020, that the, the entertainment industry had a plan that by 2020, 10% of those involved in entertainment the cast members in shows and music, anything, they wanted 10% of them to be immoral, uh, living alternative lifestyles, um, magnifying things that are not natural. Right. And, and, and we got to be careful that we don't let those things infiltrate us. We are his disciples. And so we must recommit to the Great Commission. And I ask you, what are you doing right now in the kingdom of God? I'm asking you this question. What are you doing? Right. Are you doing something for him? Are you following the great commission? We've got to follow this. We, we can't distance ourselves from this culture. Thank God for the one who brought you to church and shared it with you. Thank God for the man of God, the pastor in my life. I can't walk away from this. You see, the coming generations do not see themselves connected to the church. That's why we got to come and override that. You know, this one young lady named Amanda, and she was interviewed by uh, radio host Albert Moeller, and she says, religion is not made for young people. They are postponing marriage and family formation, but definitely not postponing sex and immorality they're postponing things that lead them to what their calling is but they're not postponing the immoral immoral things that will ultimately keep them from what god wants in their lives they're playing around they're hooking up they're they're living uh outside of the confines of marriage they're not postponing immorality but they're postponing all the things that god wants to do in their life this is a quote-unquote church girl and so we've got to be careful with that. There's a stat that says that just 29% of North Americans now say they attend religious services once a week or more often. And that is down 41% from the year 2000. Think about when you were in the year 2000, if we're even born, <laughs> you know, or even alive. But that's a big, big thing. As we wrap up, we pray that we don't allow ourselves to be infiltrated by things that will dilute the kingdom culture in our life. We got to be careful what we put in front of us, what we listen to. And if your faith is running low, the word of God tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. It also tells us that faith without works is dead, that we've got to live out our faith. You see, ministry is kingdom culture. And it's the heart of who we are. It's the heart of who we are. And it's the function that God put in our lives to determine what he wants us to do. And we're all uniquely shaped. Not all of us are the same. Thank God for that. Don't try to be someone that you're not. Be who God has called you to be. And so we're called to be good stewards of that, to fulfill what God wants to do in our lives. I've always said this, and Amber and I have always lived by this, that our primary ministry should be a commitment in an area that we're gifted in. That should be our primary ministry. But we should all have a secondary ministry that includes serving in an area in which we are solely needed, not gifted with. It's important to serve in places of your gifting. That's where you shine but it's also important to serve in places where you're just needed, needed. I'm needed. I, I know they're more qualified. I may be overqualified for this job in ministry, but guess what? I'm needed. I'm needed. As, as we close, we've just got a, a, uh, just a few minutes left, left a couple minutes left. Uh, the Lord calls us to have interactions with people. 
we were serving at our local food distribution in August and a man comes running to church and he says, I need to be baptized. I need to pray for the Holy Ghost to fill me. And we pray. He gets baptized. He gets the Holy Ghost. No, I was, we were there serving. We were serving in our acts of service. God will bring interactions for us, for him to show how great he is. I, w- I went that morning. We went that morning to serve food, but little did we know we were going to interact with someone that their life would be changed. He goes to church. This is a man who's a gang member, notable, noted gang member in the mafia. He can't get out of the gang. If you get out, you can only get out by being killed uh, or, or murdered by an enemy or with from within. He wanted out. He said, I know that living for God is going to cost my life. He lives for God for the next three weeks. Come sat- September at that next food distribution. You know what's crazy? That August food distribution, we bapt- I personally baptized him in Jesus' name. Saw him filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost at that September food distribution. After it was said and done, I went to the cemetery. I went to the burial place and we buried Brian in the name of Jesus. We buried him. He lost his life. You see, Brian was was murdered because he wanted out of a sinful lifestyle. He was so desperate, Amber, to, to get out of that culture and get into the kingdom culture that it cost him his life. But I'm thankful it's the mercies of God that brought him. It's the mercies of God that, that had that interaction. It's only because of service that that happened. And in August, Brian was going to die a sinner. But in September, he died a born-again child of God. Yeah. Don't lose the culture that God has put in your life. Don't lose it at all. Can we pray together? Amber, can you close this out in prayer? Oh, God, we love you and we thank you, Jesus. I pray, God, for every hyphen, Lord, under the sound of my voice, Jesus. You are intentional where you have placed them. You place them in campuses. You place them in career paths. You place them in jobs, Lord, where they have influenced Jesus. I pray, God, that they will be kingdom-minded every yes. single day. When they step on that college campus, yes, Lord, Jesus. let the awareness of lost souls flood and burden their hearts. When they step in their job, when they step, God, yes. anywhere that they are going, where they frequent their coffee shops, let them yes, be burdened Jesus. for lost souls. Let them know that you place them there for a reason, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that they'll, you'll use hyphens like you've never used them before. Lord, in the pages of scripture, you raised up hyphens. Lord, you've raised up Esther's. You've raised yes, up God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's. You've raised up David's, Lord. And those types of individuals are in our hyphen generation today. And it is no accident that you place them where you place them. I pray, God, your anointing be upon him. Your favor be upon him, God. Use them, Lord. Use them for your kingdom, God. Help them to treasure you, their kingdom culture and never to compromise their values and their morals. God, I pray for your favor and your blessing in the mighty name of Jesus, in your precious name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you all. We love you.